Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. For this one we're going to return to the oldest brewery in the world, so of course I am talking about the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan, who are from a little town called Freising in Germany, just to the north of uh, Munich Airport actually, so if you get a layover there, go and visit Weinstefan, always worth doing. And for this review we are going to have a taste of the Hefeweiss beer, and if you've watched my German reviews before, you'll know that when I talk about Hefeweizen's I will t always tell you there are three different types of Hefeweizen. You get the Dunkelweizen, which is the roasted Hefeweizen, the Kristallweizen, which is the filtered variety, and you also get the Naturtrube Hefeweizen, which is the unfiltered variety. And this one is the is the Weinstefan Naturtrube Hefeweizen, basically. And this is meant to be the best beer in the range, and I've tried this one or two times before, and I can tell you that it is a beautiful beer, so I'm really looking forward to doing the tasting part of the video with you for this one. So as is usual then with my beer reviews, I'll take you through a very brief history of the brewery. It's quite an interesting one, so I hope you'll stick with me for that. If not, just fast forward a few minutes into the video and you will get straight to the tasting. The brewery website is in the video description for you below, so check that out if you are interested. And there is also a link there to my other Vine Stefan reviews, and there will be two more of these, the Vitus and also the Corbinian. So subscribe to the channel if you do want to see those coming up for you in the next little while. So, the brewery's origins date back to 725 when St. Corbinian and 12 of his companions founded a Benedictine monastery on the Narberg Hill and thus the art of brewing was born in Weinstefan. So the first historical reference to Weinstefan was in the year 768, at which time there was a hop garden in the vicinity of the Weinstefan monastery. And the owner of this hop garden actually had to pay a 10% tax to the monks to be able to, brew, to, uh, to grow his hops there. Now in 955 the Weinstefan monastery was plunged and destroyed by Huns and this laid the foundation for a tradition of the Benedictine monks having to constantly rebuild and reconstruct their monastery. Now in 1040 the beer brewing officially began in Weinstefan after Abbot Arnold obtained a license to brew and sell beer from the city of Freising and this marked the birth of the Weinstefan monastery brewery. Now between 1085 and 1463 the Weinstefan monastery really didn't have much luck at all. It burnt down a total of four times, it was destroyed and depopulated by three plagues, various famines and also a great earthquake. And following in tradition of the Huns from 955, Emperor Ludwig the Bavarian destroyed the monastery in 1336 and then this was repeated by the French and Swedes during the Thirty Years' War and also by the Austrians during the Spanish succession. Now the monks didn't give up however despite all of these things that were kind of screwing up their monastery and they continued to rebuild the brewery time and again and they even managed to refine their brewing art while doing so. So a very kind of resilient group of people that were running this brewery. Of course, in 1516, Duke Wilhelm IV of Bavaria issued the Bavarian Purity Law, and thus only barley, hops and water were allowed to be used in Bavarian beer. And the brewery say this law had a real influence on the style of beer that they began to brew. Now, the Weinstefan Monastery was dissolved in the year 1803 during the course of secularisation, and the possessions and rights of the brewery were then transferred to the Bavarian state, but the drinkers of Weinstefan continued to enjoy the beer under the secular supervision of the royal holdings at Schleisheim. Now in 1852 the Central Agricultural School was moved from Schleisheim to Weinstefan and it took with it the Bavarian brewing students and in 1895 this school became an academy and then was elevated in 1919 to the University of Agriculture and Brewing which was then incorporated to the Technical University of Munich in 1930, one of the very prestigious German universities in fact. But Weinstefan thus developed into the the centre of world brewing technology and this is a fact that did massive favours for the reputation of the Bavarian state brewery of Weinstefan or the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei of Weinstefan as they call it in Germany. In 1921 the brewery then became it became officially known as the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan and since 1923 they've used the Bavarian state crest on all their bottles which you can see here. So that's your brief history of the Weinstefan brewery and I'll just list the other beers you can get from these guys. The other Weinstefan Stefan beers include Crystal Weiss beer, which is the green labelled, the filtered Hefeweizen, as I explained to you earlier. You get this guy here, which is the Hefeweizen beer, the blue labelled one, unfiltered or Naturtrube, as they would say in German. Hefeweizen beer Dunkel, which is the sort of white label with the kind of brown scrolls on it. This is a dark wheat beer. You get Hef Hefeweizen beer Lich, which is a light wheat beer. Corbinian, which is a Doppelbock. Original, which is a Munich style Helles. Pilsner, which is obviously a Pilsner style beer. Oktoberfest 
Vinterfest, which is Mertzen, Vinterfest beer, which is a Saison beer, and they also do a Radler beer and, a, and Original and Hefeweiss beer in alcohol-free varieties, or alcohol fry as they would say in German. So that is your sort of kind of overview of the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan. I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. What I've noticed actually just when I was bringing the beer out is that this one appears to be in English rather than German which is quite unusual. Usually it says Eltis Brauerei der Welt on top of this one but as you can see this one is in English. The world's oldest brewery cloudy wheat beer which would normally it would normally say Natiotrub Hefeweizen on the bottom and Eltis Brauerei der Welt I'm sure and it also says since 1040. So this is a an anglicised bottle of the uh, the Weinstefan Hefeweiss beer and this beer is meant to be absolutely beautiful and I do I do kind of remember what it's like so I'm really interested to try it but as I said you can see the Bavarian state crest on this beer here it's also on the bottle cap at the top although it is completely gold rather than colored and it is on the top label as well you can see time from 1040 so this is the oldest brewery in the world and I think this is pretty much their flagship beer so without further ado let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting I'm sure it is 5.4 percent and this is a Natiotrub Hefeweizen as I already explained to you so let's get on with this as you can see a really nice sort of smoky opening to this beer so let's get it out and into the glass I'll leave a little bit in the bottle as I always do so we can Sugar it up and have a little smell of it. So I guess that will do for the moment. I'll just put this back. So as you can see, it's poured a nice sort of cloudy, kind of opaque, pale golden straw colour. There's a hell of a lot of carbonation in this one and you've got a nice kind of finger and a half of a solid white frothy head on here. If I put my fingers behind it you can just see a little bit of the light moving about but it's pretty much an opaque beer and a lot of carbonation moving around. It looks very attractive and I would definitely stick with my analysis of a pale golden straw colour. So let's give it a smell and see how we get on. So without sugaring it up you get quite a bit of banana Definitely a kind of banana and bready yeast character, this one, which is what you would expect from a Natiotrub Hefeweizen. Obviously, in a Natiotrub Weizen, you would expect a little bit more yeasty character coming out of this one. And you can definitely detect that in the aroma without even having to kind of shake the beer up a little bit to get the other elements out of it. But it's definitely got all the kind of typical Hefeweizen aromas that you would expect. So it's got a nice kind of doughy and bready character to it. You've got the kind of typical banana elements mixed in with the aroma there. Nice kind of clove and wheat spice with this one. There's almost a little bit of spicy character coming out of it as well. and That's of course one of the aspects you, you would expect from the, the wheat and the clove in it. So maybe that's just one of the consequences of it being natto true rather than cristal. Because I remember the cristal was quite a... The banana and stuff came out a little bit more, but the bread in this one really, really comes out. And I love a Natto Troop Hefeweizen. I do think it is a little bit better than the Cristal, but if you want the taste of a Weizen, uh, but don't want it to be quite as filling, then that's when you go for the Cristal beer, in my opinion. But this smells absolutely beautiful. I mean, you've got just a little bit of a kind of grainy note coming out of it as well, but apart from that, it is pretty much a typical Hefeweizen, which is what you'd expect. This is pretty much one of the benchmarks of the style. So let's get the rest of this guy out and then we'll get on with the taste in here. Just need to watch with this. There we are. Poured very nicely actually. Just see if we can get the last little bit in. The Germans, as I've mentioned to you on numerous occasions, they like a nice kind of convex head on their beers like this. And I apologise for not reviewing this beer in a Hefeweizen glass. The Germans are very, very particular about that, but I didn't have time to actually go out and get one of the, uh, the Hefeweizen glasses to review this beer. Let me just get the last little bit of this beer in. So, here we are. So we'll get on with the tasting of this beer now. So the Hefeweizen beer from the Weinstefan, the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan. So as you can see, a really attractive beer. I've got the nice convex head that the Germans like, not in the glass, but still. So this is probably the benchmark of Hefeweizens in Germany. So let's give this guy a taste and see how we get on here. Yeah, it, it follows the aroma 
in the sense that it does have quite a bit of spice character to it and you would expect that from the Natto Troop Hefeweizen because obviously it's unfiltered which leaves a lot of the kind of yeasty character in the beer. The Crystal Weizen obviously is a hell of a lot less malty and kind of filling than uh, the Natto Troop Hefeweizen. But yeah, it's very, very smooth. You're getting a lot of nice kind of bready character about it. The banana flavours in this one, I would point out, the banana flavour is a lot less prominent in the taste than it is in the aroma, which is quite interesting. It is definitely there, but I do think, you, from what you would smell in the aroma, it is quite a bit less in the flavour, in terms of the flavour of the beer than it is than you would expect from the aroma. So there's a nice sort of sweet doughy bready and yeasty character to this one. As I'm saying you're getting just a nice little bit of banana flavour mixing in with that. And that kind of comes at the very front of the tongue actually. The banana flavours move just towards the front of the tongue and you get this nice blanket of kind of bready and sweet yeasty character coming on top of that. It's, it's actually quite fresh this one. I remember, This is one thing that stands out of this beer. The banana flavours in this one are actually quite, they do have a kind of element of freshness to them which is really really nice. I would say though you are getting a lot of the kind of clove and wheat spice in this one which is quite interesting and that's just going around the edge of the tongue there. The beer as I said feels very fresh and just round the edge of the tongue is where you're getting these nice kind of wheat and clovey spice elements of the flavour here. It does have just a tiny little bit of a uh, of cereal character to it but very very subtle I think indeed mainly a nice white sort of doughy bready yeast a little bit of banana and then you have just this nice little banana freshness kind of in there as well it's a very very interesting beer this one actually and pr definitely the best one of the range I mean I've always said when I went to Germany I struggled with Hefeweizens a bit because they are very very kind of heavy beers I find it easier to drink Bock than I do to drink these beers actually but it's not that I don't enjoy them, it's just the fact that they are really kind of heavy, if that makes sense. There is some sort of element of grassy character coming out of this beer at the end. It, it becomes, the beer start, the mouthfeel of the beer starts off quite heavy and that's when you get a lot of the kind of bready and yeasty dough character in this one. And then the sort of hoppy character, the more grassy elements of the hop is coming out just a little bit later on in this one and it, it, the, the flavour transit makes the transition very very well it doesn't jump about between things and give you two sharp flavours here or there it's a very very kind of smooth transition in beer it starts off with this nice kind of bready doughy yeast banana flavours in there then it moves to just being slightly hoppier and I do think there's a bit of element of a kind of grassy and citric character in there it's a very very beautiful beer this one Yeah, I would stick with that. You just get a teeny tiny little bit of grassy and lemon citric character around the edge of the tongue. Very faint though, not punchy in any way. And then you just have this really sweet banana doughy bready yeast that kind of goes out over the tongue. The flavour just blends together really beautifully in this beer. And it is very, very highly rated on the likes of Rate Beer and Beer Advocate and things like that. And you can see why. It's the benchmark of the style pretty much. Absolutely stunning beer. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would definitely say it's mid-bodied. It, at the start of the beer, you do get that more kind of bready and yeasty character, which is very very kind of strong so I would say it, it kind of pushes more towards mid body it's got moderate carbonation but overall it is rather smooth and it is quite crisp at the same time that nice fresh character that the beer has makes it quite an easy drinking one with that little sort of citricky and grassy character that the beer has absolutely beautiful though and I mean if you do get the chance to try this beer I highly recommend that you, uh, you give it a go absolutely stunning beer and as I say one of the benchmarks of the style 
and definitely outstanding within this title. So give this beer a try if you get the chance. Anything you try from Vine Stefan, I'm almost certain that you won't be disappointed with it. But I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Please let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer. It's always interesting to hear other people's opinions on it and to kind of know that I'm not talking rubbish when it comes to these beers. I hope you've enjoyed the review. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff and I will catch you soon with another beer review and I will at some point soon be reviewing the Vitus and also the Corbinian from the, the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan. So I'll catch you soon with those reviews. Cheers.